Today I'll be doing a quick unboxing of the Corsair Cooling Air Series A50. So this is a performance CPU cooler, not to be confused with what I have over here, which is the A70, which is classified as a high performance CPU cooler. So this is performance, this is high performance. There are a couple of key differences, so what I'll probably end up doing is uh, taking them both out to do a quick comparison for you. They both feature a two-year warranty as well as compatibility with LGA 775, 1156, 1366, Core, Core AM3, AM2 and AM3, as well as compatibility with 120mm fans. Corsair's 120mm fans are generally pretty good quality, so I'd expect this one to be much more of the same. You can either select 1600 or 2000 RPM on the fan, and here we have a little performance graph compared to your stock cooler. I can't help but wonder what stock cooler they were using. Oh, here we go. Core i7-965 processor running at stock 3.2 GHz. So, uh, actually, the LGA-1366 cooler that comes with the 965 is a pretty decent cooler so if it outperforms that one by a significant margin you can rest assured it will outperform your 1156 775 or AMD stock cooler so let's take the packaging off just like this look at that I didn't need a knife at all am I still zoomed in oh yeah that's why you can't see what I'm doing there we go yeah much better so the box is actually similar in size to the A70, but a little bit shorter. Okay, so you got about uh, about two to three centimeters there in terms of extra shortness or less length, if you prefer. They're both the same sideways dimensions, so it's not really bigger in that regard. We'll go ahead and open up the top here. Have a look at what's inside. With the A70, I tried to guess what was inside all the boxes. This time, hopefully, I'll be a little bit more accurate. Okay, I'm going to guess that in here is accessories of some sort. Oh, boy. Sure wish I could get the stuff out of here. That would... There we go. All right, so inside the box, we will find something to get the box out of the light we will find all of the accessories so we have a 120 millimeter fan which comes with their uh, shroud slash clip that i actually really like it makes fan mounting a breeze and it's also got nice anti-vibration rubber grommets um, mounting the fan to the frame we've also got the am2 am3 hold down thermal compound thumb screws rubber washers and a fan speed adapter fan speed well, fan noise reduction adapter, so that'll turn your fan speed down, presumably to 1600 RPM. Here's a Corsair Solutions guide outlining all of their different solutions, including memory solutions, cooling solutions, power chassis, USB, and storage solutions. It's gotten to the point where, uh, as per their Dream Machine campaign, you can actually almost build a PC entirely out of Corsair parts. So here's their backplate for Intel. Here's a little plastic piece to keep the uh, motherboard components on the back from being shorted out. You can adjust these clips here to go from 775 to 1156 to 1366 quite easily. And then there's a hold down for the top side along with some screws. Perfect. So that's all of our mounting accessories as well as our fan accessories. I'm gonna hold on to the fan for now. Just put that in there. Yeah, there we go. Hold on to the fan, and let's have a look at the cooler itself. So it comes packed in foam. Just like that. It comes with a little uh, quick start guide, which I guess shows you how to install it on the socket of your choice. That's too much thermal compound. I would probably put on about half of that, but uh, A plus for effort, Corsair. I mean, they're not wrong. The only disadvantage is that you're going to get some thermal goop around the edges of your CPU, and like it's kind of... It's kind of hard to clean off of there. It won't damage anything, but it's just a pain when you're trying to clean off the CPU to, I don't know, put it back in a box or whatever it is you need to do. Do not return this product to the store. Corsair wants to cover all of the technical support, customer service, etc. themselves. Don't eat this. 
and then we have the cooler. So it's quite a bit smaller than the A70 right off the bat. You've got the same black top that I really liked on the A70, so you've got three heat pipes coming up through it, and then instead of seeing a standard silver or chromed top, you've got a nice black one, which will go really well with the black interior and the Corsair 800D. The fins are quite tightly spaced, but as long as the fan has reasonably good static pressure, which it better because it's, I believe, the same one that they're using on the H50, then you should get fairly good performance out of it that way. The fan clips on that easily. That's how hard it is. So you just clip it on and then you can pull it off and clip it on and pull it off. But it is secure enough that it's not just going to fall off. So here, if I take the heat sink and shake it around like if it was being shipped on a truck. There, it doesn't fall off. Excellent. All right. I was hoping it wouldn't fall off. Then we've got the bottom of the heat sink. So this is where we see it is a heat pipe direct touch heat sink. So that, ooh, that was bad. That means that it will survive a fall from approximately six inches above the table and it will not be damaged because it is engineered like that. Okay, so I'm just distracting you right now while I pull the A70 out of its box so that I can do a quick comparison against its little brother, the A50. Here we are. All right, it looks a lot bigger, but it's not actually that much bigger. It's just because of the additional bulk from the fans. I mean, it's a little bit bigger, but anyway, let's finish off with the A50 here. So I'll do the obligatory finger shot. It's not all that shiny, but it does look quite flat. Although my, uh, my unmeasured appearance o meter is not going to give us too good an indication of that, but I would expect it to be reasonably well manufactured. I mean, that is one of the things that is tough about heat pipe direct touch, though, is that when you're manufacturing, you do have to make sure that it is aligned completely precisely, all of the heat pipes, and that they are aligned precisely with the base, because what you do is you assemble the whole thing, mush it all together, and then you have to actually flatten the whole thing as a whole. So if you go too far, you'll go inside the heat pipes. Heat pipes are not solid, they are hollow, and usually full of some kind of a, a gas slash liquid, because that's what allows it to transfer heat so quickly. So if you go too far, you puncture a heat pipe, rendering the whole thing useless. And if you don't go far enough, then you're gonna lose some of the efficiency of actually having the heat sink directly on top of the heat spreader of the CPU. Oh look, oh, there's Corsair logos on, uh, on, on the bottom too. There's a nice finishing touch for you. You'll never see it in all likelihood, but it's there. You'll know it's there and that'll make you feel better. Okay, so here we are. We can compare the two heat sinks against each other. So the first thing you'll notice in terms of difference is that the A70 looks much bigger because of the big fan. I already mentioned that. The next thing you'll notice is that it has more heat pipes. So it has 33% more heat pipes, and in theory, 33% more performance, although it probably doesn't quite work out that way. Let's just uh, strip the fans off them so you can see just how much thicker it is. I can also tell already that it has quite a bit more surface area in terms of fins, too, because what they've done with the, uh, with the A50 is they've actually gone a little bit... Okay, yeah, you can see it has a slightly different shape to it. So... No, you can't really see that. Okay, I guess the only difference here is that the A50 only has the one side that you can clip the fan to. That's kind of interesting. So rather than being shaped the same on both sides like the A70, because the A70 is designed to have a fan clip to either side, you can see clip marks here, 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 and here, the A50 can only accept a fan on the one side. This side is actually flat. That's why it looked like there was actually less fin material on this side of the heat pipes to me, but it's not actually the case. Although it is quite a bit thinner. So you know what, I'm, hmm, it's hard to say how much performance difference you'd see, but um, maybe I'll have to actually test these and find out just how well they do. Maybe I'll test them against the uh, co-gauge arrow here, which is this enormous monstrosity thing. It's, uh, yeah, okay. Well, enough speculation. They both use nice fat 8mm heat pipes, so that's a really good thing to see. So even though this one only is a 3 heat pipe cooler, it's going to do quite a bit better than a uh, heat pipe cooler that uses only 6mm heat pipes. Thank you for checking out my unboxing of the Corsair A50 CPU heatsink, and I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe both to Linus Tech Tips as well as NCIXCOM, my other official NCIX channel, and thank you for watching.